Neighbors, please don't look at my window at this exact moment. I'm realizing it's been way too long since I've made clothing out of people's discarded home decor items. Let me, uh, let me spin you a yarn. So I recently just went on a creative trip with beautiful, amazing, talented women. But I'll tell you what the main theme of that trip was. My brain telling me that I do indeed need a selkie dress. But therein lies the problem. <laughs> if I spend more than $100 on a dress, I oft feel like the old bougie cat lady from the Aristocats. We must both look our best for George. Especially if I'm only gonna be wearing the item once or twice. I just, my brain physically, emotionally cannot justify spending that much money on a dress. <laughs> pains me. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna suck it up and I'm gonna treat myself. After returning from across the pond, I tried to find a dress that I would very much like to put on my meat bag. Everything that I liked was either sold out or they didn't have my size. I present to you the dilemma. The solution is over here. To make a dress as cheaply as possible. Now one of my favorite things to do is replication. I find a lot of joy in looking at a garment, whether it be cosplay related or just a regular piece of clothing, figuring out how it was made, where the seams go. Selkie does have a lot of different styles. A poofy, marshmallowy, cupcakey dress, which I attempted to recreate with bubble wrap. And then they have the day dresses, which are super cute. And then they have these longer gowns with the ruffles at the bottom. That is what I'm going to try to recreate. Specifically this dress right here. Pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to find this exact fabric. Kind of do my own color scheme and my own pattern. Essentially, I'm gonna break this video down piece by piece. The bodice, the skirt, ruffle and collar ruffle. And then much like the Avengers, assembling. Minus some bullshit CGI that looks like a literal Spy Kids movie from the early 2000s. <laughs> The first thing I need to do is head to the thrift store so I can look for the materials that I want to make this dress out of. It's a quest of knowledge. Whilst thou accompany me. But before we start on our noble quest, this video is sponsored. Talk a little bit about that. Here is Sponsor Rachel. Hello. Do you hate spending money? You're amongst your peers. Today's video is brought to you by ThreadUp is my all-time favorite sponsor. You guys know this. <laughs> ThreadUp is a massive online thrift store. Everything is secondhand. They have your favorite brands for up to 90% off of estimated retail. It is my first stop when I'm looking for pretty much anything, whether it be cosplay related or just outfit related. You can either head to the website or the app, all the different sections you could be looking for. There's drop down menus on the side. You can sort by color, shape, style, cut, size, pattern, material. And this time around, I partnered with them to make a one-stop shop for a cozy forest vacation. So they gave me that prompt and I went on the website and went just a little ham. I picked out 20 different items that I felt like encapsulated that theme and that I thought you guys would like. But then, of course, I picked out some stuff for moi. So let me show you the different outfits that I got. Outfit number one. This top is by Aqua. Friggin' cute knit top that I've worn about 5 trillion times since I received it. It was estimated at $52, but ThreadUp had it for $16.99. These amazing trousers that are like sort of secret pants. These are by the brand Tanjori. Estimated at $32, but ThreadUp had them for $20.99. And then, because my summer vibe is essentially Victorian lady in her underwear, this freaking adorable knit top kind of reminds me of like a corset cover or something that Jane from Tarzan would wear. And then the skirt that I paired with it, and this one was a little bit more expensive. It was estimated at 115, but ThreadUp had it for 30.99. And I feel like I need to sketch some monkeys. And I love it. So that is thread up. If you're looking for cheaper clothing or if you're looking to, you know, not contribute as much to the fast fashion industry, 10 out of 10 recommend. If you guys wanna check out that little vacation shop that I set up, that's in the description. If you wanna save 40% off of your first order, you can use the code Rachel. Thank you so much ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. And before ado's are in any way furthered, to the thrift store. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> thrift store. Going to head in and start the hunt. Probably gonna gravitate towards the bed sheet section just because there's generally more yardage there. If there isn't enough yardage, usually there's duplicates or at least colors that are close enough. I feel like with tablecloths and curtains and stuff, it's a little bit harder to find enough yards to make something this long and like floofy. Maybe stop by the knickknacks section because I'm a monster and I can't be stopped. <laughs> Somebody stop me. 
Let's do it. As usual, this store's selection of little lads was not disappointing. Okay, I gotta show you what I got from the thrift store. Also, my neighbor, I think is getting their septic pumped or something. I'm gonna be honest with you, it smells like poopy diaper Febreze out there, so. Starting off with knickknacks, because of course, come on. How could I not get that? <laughs> I'm gonna put it up somewhere and see if Nick notices. I could not leave there without at least one little lad, and I love him. Have the sharticles in the air embedded themselves in my brain? Right, well, we'll figure that out later. Ooh, what a little lad. So I actually got two pairs of options here. I am very much leaning towards one of them, but I just wanted to get both just in case. A very like springy green, a floral moment for the ruffles. Uh, I do like this, but let me show you my second option because I think it's a little bit more me and I might save this for a future project. Very subtle, minty kind of green gingham picnic. Basically, this would be for the main dress and then this would be for the ruffle. They're both like a cool toned kind of green and I think probably what I'm gonna go for, especially whereas I'm gonna be wearing this dress, hopefully out in public, <laughs> and it's like a very long, swooshy, dramatic dress. I feel like I kind of want this, the colors to be a little bit more subtle. I know they say go big or go home, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much a go sort of halfway and then don't leave until you notice everyone else is leaving because you don't want to be rude. Righto. I hope you're ready because I'm about to make things real unesthetic. Yep, dress form. So this is a dress form I got offline off of like eBay or something. Already subsequently destroyed it. It is not my exact measurements. I've been using it just to kind of put things on and it's, it's really helpful with that. In terms of draping, I'm pretty sure you need a dress form that is almost exactly your measurements. Let me tell you, my waist is not this snatched. Uh -huh. Okay, stay still. Ooh, things just got spicy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> well, now we gotta fill these up with something. Toilet paper. Oh, that's nice. She bounced boobily down the stairway. Yep, that's, that's about, okay. That's, that's about right. Gazungas. Me me. I got this weird kit one time. Fabulous fit. I just found it a little offensive on the eyeballs. Foam pads that look like they've been rotting in your basement since the 70s. Bodysuit thing that you're supposed to put over your dress form. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Where's your leg hole? You're going upside down, bitch. I don't want to hear it. Neighbors, please don't look at my window at this exact moment. Okay. <sighs> yep, and then, wow, she's an Amazon. Zippity doo da, baby. Looking pretty fly. <laughs> which one is which? She looks just like me. Did not mean for my voice to cry. I don't, I don't know what just happened. Are meant for the thighs, but I think I can bulk up the waist with this. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah! Ow. <laughs> Honest to God, how am I supposed to get any work done when he's sitting here looking like that? Oh! <laughs> oh, he got you so much. Hobbies include. Kissing my dog right on his damn lips. All right, let's attempt to drape some scrap fabric and see if we can make a bodice pattern. This dress is a little tough because you really can't see what's underneath the ruffle. I would probably have to get my hands on one just to like flip it up and touch it and rub it down a little. Instead, I am gonna try to wing it from little knowledge I know of draping. Throw it across here, yes. Make it taut. A little bit of a sweetheart neckline front panel. We can always make it more symmetrical when I cut this out. But <laughs> it's not close at all. Okay, well, let's give that a shot. Surprise, actually, this is the finished product. It's a little Padme, no? 
Let's put it back on the dress form and see if... Uh... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yeah, okay. All right, same thing. This will be the side. So basically I'm gonna have the front, side front, side back, and back. So let's keep going. Aside from needing a lot more seam allowance, because I had zero, it is not bad. So now I can transfer this onto my real fabric. I probably should do a couple more steps to this process, but frankly, I don't give a ding dang darn it. So let's freaking do it. Since this dress is going to be strapless, I thought to myself, what would HBO do? And so I threw some boning in there. <laughs> so I did that on the lining layer, and then you're able to just plop it on top of the outer layer, sew around the edges, and then turn inside out, and there you go. Next is the skirt, which I think is gonna be very simple. I have the bodice pretty much all ready to go. I have to make the waistband. I have pretty much entire sheet left, except for the sliver on the side that I cut out the bodice pieces. What I think I can do is just measure how long I need it to be before the ruffle starts. Cut out just a giant rectangle. I might need to do two pieces and sew them together and gather. I ran to the fabric store and I grabbed twill tape. I'm gonna attach the gathered part too. It just makes it feel like a little bit more sturdy and I feel like the gathers aren't gonna fall out. I'm on the road to learning how to make garments that are actually gonna last and put up with my bullshit. Whoop, there it goes. I'm just gonna get started and then we can do the ruffles. Let's do it. After doing my best Zamboni impression, I got to work measuring and cutting out a straight line. I'm trying out these lashes that they're supposed to stay on for like a week. They might be a little too glamorous for me. I just kind of feel like Patrick. But you know what? Mama wanted to look a little pretty. I may have a dull acne and hyperactive sweat glands, but I got luscious lashes. <laughs> Wham, bam, thank you. Madam. I'll tell you what though, this fabric wrinkles like nobody's business and it's really hard to get the wrinkles out. And now I'm gonna make the waistband and just get to attaching all of that. Starting to think that this dress is a little too simple for a video, but it's the journey, not the destination. You having a fun journey? Oh, I'm just gonna put this here for now. My favorite part about using bed sheets, a lot of them have border, at least at the top or bottom. Just cut this out without measuring. Plop it on like that. Bam, waistband. So easy. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna attach the skirt to the waistband. I'll have to look at the reference. Underlay. I think my plan for this, laying the waistband section over the pleats and then hand sewing shouldn't take me all too long. Because if you look at the dress, I don't see an obvious harsh stitching line, so it does look like possibly hand sewn. Look at me hand sewing. Who art thou? Intricate f***ing trouser wear in bed, bitch. 
All right, well, I'm gonna throw on the basement yard and just get going here. Catch you in a bit. Ruffle time, baby. For the ruffle, have cut out a long strip of that gingham fabric. I don't <laughs> really know how you're supposed to calculate how much ruffleage you want, but I did measure the bottom of this skirt. I think I have enough to do about like double. So I think that's how you do ruffles. I don't know, although I am a little upset. It's got uh, a little bit of questionable stains. And so I had to do a little snipperoo. So basically, I gotta... <sighs> sew these two pieces together. Again, saving myself some time here because one end is already hemmed. I love doing less work. Checking for more stains, I think we're good. I just need to gather this onto the skirt and I might be completely unhinged. So as I'm going on the machine, is that a really dumb idea? So this method did actually work. It was a little bit annoying, but it worked but I did end up cutting out more fabric about two more times, so I definitely needed more than just twice the amount. Still have no idea how to do this properly and have not learned from my mistakes, but you know, moving on. Oh ho ho ho, are you ready? <laughs> you still ready? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> Honestly, for completely guessing the yardage and how much I was supposed to do for what, I would say this is pretty similar to the reference photos, which pretty damn cool. I need to enclose everything in the back and then put a zipper. Now I'm gonna do the collar ruffle. To do that, I'm gonna measure out how long I want it to be. I ran out of hemmed pieces because I used it all for the ruffle at the bottom. I'm gonna hem that. What are my bangs doing? Oh no, I look like Keanu in Bill and Ted. Most excellent. Yep, it's fine. Fold over the top and make a casing for the elastic. Yet again, I'm just gonna guess. We're getting there. I hope this isn't too boring. To thread the elastic through that casing, I used the handy dandy safety pin hack, attaching it to the front of the elastic and then inching it in there and pulling down the excess and just continuing until it's all the way through. What do you do when you have horrible monstrosity seams that'll make the entire population of seamstresses cringe? Put a bow on it! And with that secret between just you and I, it is ready for the reveal. Wrap up time. Ta da! <laughs> it is done and I am so happy. Swoosh time, ready? Oh my goodness! Oh, oh. Ah, ah, tick! Ugh, that's so gross. Oh, nasty. Never underestimate ticks, folks. That whimsical scene 
from Sound of Music. Totally covered in ticks at the end. <laughs> To be a little gushy about sewing, I know I give it a hard time. I feel like I've said this a lot in my recent videos, but it just baffles my dang melon that just by taking some fabric and some thread, you can recreate a $400 dress. <laughs> Although I will say with all the hand sewing in this project, the amount of times I drew blood, <laughs> I am pretty sure I could convince Madame Bathory, to forget about the virgins, I think I could suffice. It's so whimsical. Now, I've never worn the selkie dress and I've never seen it in person. I would think this is pretty similar to the skirt swooshage. It's so fun to walk in. Oh. Although, admittedly, it's quite hard to do anything else, like walk upstairs. I definitely did more ruffleage here, but I kind of like it. I love a good ruffle and you can wear it like this if I wanted to. On that note, I'm very excited that the strapless situation worked for me. Have not once yet had to do the strapless thing where you like, Ugh, you know? And I think that is also because I put boning in it. I don't know, I'm just like really excited about that part of it. I feel like a lot of times when I make something, maybe look nice, but then when I wear it, something is just weird. And especially strapless stuff, I feel like I'm always kind of battling it slipping down or it doesn't fit my waist correctly. I'm very excited because this dress fits really well. It functions really well. It's comfy. It's not hard to get into. You saw the back does not line up to each other and it's atrocious, but hey, you can't really tell because they put a bow on it. Yeah, I don't know. I hope this wasn't like too simple of a project. I, I tend to think that if a dress is like relatively easy to make, then no one would want to watch me make it. I also want to clarify because like a moral gray area when you make a designer or a brand's dress. I am definitely going to be buying a Selkie dress. I have nothing against them. They are expensive because they're slow fashion and handmade. So I have nothing against the price. I have nothing against people who spend money on their dresses. Treat yourself. I just kind of wanted the challenge to see if I could make it myself and what that would entail. The usual spiel, Patreon, $5 a month. I make extra bonus videos. It's almost weekly content between this and the Patreon, if you're interested. And again, thank you so much ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. If you guys did wanna check out that little vacay shop and shop all the items that I put in there for you, the link is in the description. And bonus, if you want 40% off of your first order, you can use the code Rachel. And that is it. <laughs> I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Ooh, things are gonna get easier. Uh, what was I saying? I feel like Velma's beige cousin. Velma if she was in the beginning of Wizard of Oz. Don't look at me. You are so sleepy, sir. Are you Eby in Eby or the sleepy? Wow. That is a really pretty bird.